the MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. What's up, you guys? Real quick, we have a newly added match to UFC 263. A lot of you guys have been asking for, for some of my feedback upon that fight. Uh, so I want to give that to you. And uh, this is a fight I'm actually interested in. I like this fight here. Uh, I'm almost as excited for this matchup as I was for the init initial Frank Camacho versus Matt Favola fight. Uh, of course, unfortunately, Frank Camacho was involved in a car accident. Uh, thank God he's doing all right. Seems to be in good graces. So uh, that's a good thing. But he's not able to make the, the walk this upcoming weekend, which is understandable. Uh, I believe he has some herniated discs and whatnot in his, his back and this and that. Uh, but now in steps Terrence McKinney. This is a guy that's very talented. If you guys are not up to par with him, we've seen him fight on Dana White's Contender Series. He was a big favorite uh, in that fight against Sean Woodson. Uh, but Sean Woodson did pull the upset off on him, hit him with that flying knee. But still, McKinney's a talented dude. He think, I think he's about 10-3 and three as a professional. I don't have the stats in front of me, but he's a guy. Uh, his other loss was against Derek Minner. Shout out to Minner as well. Uh, a guy that has a lot of underrated victories on his resume, uh, Derek Minner there. Uh, so no real shame in that loss. He got caught in a triangle in that fight. But McKinney is a guy, he has decent grappling, pretty solid jujitsu, pretty solid grappling, uh, wrestling takedowns and all that. Uh, his striking is nasty. I've seen him go in there and just straight out starch dudes. As of his last two fights, he put both those guys out in the first round, hit one dude with a nasty head kick. Uh, so, I mean, his striking's nasty as well. He's going to have about a three-inch reach advantage on Favola here. But take into consideration, he is taking this fight on short notice. So you got to wonder, you know, how's his cardio doing? Is he ready for that that pace of Favola? Because you know damn well Favola can push the pace uh, on his opponent. Uh, Matt Favola coming off a tough loss against Armand Sarukian. But, you know, when you really think about it, Armand Sarukian is a guy that I'm really high on. I think he has the potential to be in the mix for, for a title shot in the next four or five years. I don't know. I mean, maybe not even that long. You know, the guy, he's very young. But our Armand, the point I'm making is Armand's a stud. And Matt Frivola showed up in that fight. He, he did a lot better than some people may have even expected him to do. So uh, before that, Frivola had two victories in a row against Luis Pena and uh, Jalen Turner. U used his grappling and his wrestling against Turner. He was able to, uh, to win the fight there. And, um, I, you know, Frivola is a pretty big favorite going into this fight. I'm going to say this much. You guys know I'm a big fan of Frivola's. I got nothing but love for him. Um, and uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say he wins this fight. But I think the line is off when you're talking about a minus 300. That's a pretty hefty favorite there. And I think McKinney is a talented fighter. So I think it's a little bit disrespectful in a way. So no shade to Frivola or anything like that. You know, I think that. I think Favola should, should show up and he should handle business. He was training for, for a big fight against Camacho. Uh, both those guys ha have, you know, striking. So stylistically, not too much of a difference. And Favola can always grapple. He could wrestle. He has the jujitsu. So it's not like he's going to be rusty there. I don't expect McKinney to really, sh you know, shine on him in, in that in that situation. Uh, Favola will be, you know, okay there. So as long as he was working on his striking... We've seen McKinney freeze up before on the feet. Maybe Favola hits him with a, a nasty hook and, and hurts him there. Uh, but I think that his his real path to victory is to push the pace, try to wear McKinney out. Remember now, McKinney took this fight on short notice, try to grind him out and take control in those later rounds and maybe pull off a submission on McKinney. Maybe a head and arm triangle choke, something like that. Something, uh, you know, Favola has some nice power chokes like that. So maybe he pulls something off like that. Um, again, check this guy out, Terrence McKinney. Look him up online. If you're not that familiar with him, you'll be a little bit more excited for the fight. Uh, his last two victories were over in LFA. He, he, uh, he had some controversy in his life. You know, he went through some things. And, uh, there was some incident, you could pull the video up, where he was high on drugs. He was drunk at a party. Some, some people, some friends gave him acid, I think, in shrooms. He was tripping out. The cops, uh, I don't know what they did. They tased him or did, they did something. He was a little bloody in the ambulance. I think they, he, he, had some type of issue but he got through it he's got his life on track seems to be like he seems to be a grounded guy at this point in time in his life and he has the biggest fight in his life coming up this upcoming saturday against a guy in the steamroller that's no joke so uh let, let's see how this fight plays out i got the steamroller to win the fight just keep in mind i, I think that some people are disrespecting mckinney because they're not that familiar with him so the line is a little steep but I got my boy, the steamroller. You guys enjoy the fights. Signing out. The 
MMA fortune teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller. The teller.